Hello, how you doing? Brian Howard here with BKH Credit Group at bkhcreditgroup.com. And in this video training, we're going to talk about how to get business credit for a startup business, right? Now, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Brian Howard and I am the director of credit services here at BKH Credit Group. One of the many things that we do at BKH Credit Group and primarily what we do at BKH Credit Group is we specialize in helping small businesses build a business credit profile for their business that is separate from their personal credit file, which is very, very important. So we help business owners navigate through the process of trying to build a credit profile for their business. That's essentially what we, what we do here. Uh, we also provide personal credit restoration services as well as some other uh, business and per personal financial services. But the bulk of what we do revolves around building business credit and repairing personal credit and then obviously also I do some coaching and consulting as you see there uh, that's the cover of my book business made business credit made easy that I wrote I think now what it's been four years since I wrote business credit made easy and I would have to say that 95 percent of what's in the book is still relevant uh, today I also authored uh, credit made easy which was a a book um, about personal credit uh, that I wrote prior to writing business credit made easy and and both of those books you both of those books you can actually find on amazon.com I'm not here to sell you a book or anything like that I mean the books pretty much sell themselves but I did wanted to give you some type of background about uh, who we are uh, if you have any questions right after the webinar or if you want to book some time with me you can do so by going to my website www.bkhcreditgroup.com and scheduling a business credit consultation okay or you can email me at Brian Howard at bkhcreditgroup.com also keep in mind that sometimes I'm not the one that's manning my email sometimes my assistant uh, responds to emails but generally 90% of the time I'm, I'm the one that's actually responding to any emails that go to that email box alright so let's get to the topic at hand the topic at hand is how can we build business credit for a startup business uh, obviously if you are a startup business you have no business credit profile and so starting uh, business starting the process of building business credit is going to be crucial and to for the long-term financial success of your business uh, for those of you that have watched my YouTube channel sometimes I know you hear me talking about having the CFO mentality you know everyone talks about how they're the CEO of their own company and that's great but you know every every strong company needs someone acting in that role as the CFO the chief financial officer someone that is responsible for growing the finances and the credit opportunities for the business so I like to attract business owners that have a CFO mentality and with that CFO mentality they understand the importance of investing you know both time uh, resources uh, capital money etc into building business credit for their business so let's talk about what business credit is right essentially essentially what business credit is is business credit is credit that's in the name of the business and not the owners uh, I think that's pretty self-explanatory we're talking about credit that's in the name of the business and not the owner now your personal credit does not matter and when we say your personal credit does not matter what that means is is you can build a lot of vendor credit a lot of business credit ie some vendor credit ie some trade references ie uh, some retail store accounts etc and even business credit cards without your personal credit coming into play but that's based on the assumption right that you have a strong business credit profile and a strong business so this is all about the company's ability to pay and what the credit providers care about the most they're looking at does the business have the ability uh, to pay for this credit and this opens up a multitude of opportunities for your business so my belief is that business credit is a brilliant solution for a startup business because you're in the startup phase and it's something that as you're growing the business you can be growing the business credit simultaneously 
And the great thing is, is that you can get vendor credit right out of the gate. You can initially get vendor credit uh, the day that you open your business. And then eventually you can get store credit like Best Buy, Walmart, Amazon, and Dell within 90 days or fewer. Now, I really would like to, to change that number and push it out to more like 120 days because it's just been my experience that most business owners are not going through the process as aggressively as those that have been able to achieve this in 90 days. So this is something that's going to vary. It's not a concrete number. We've seen it done in as little as 90 days, but obviously it can take longer. It's just going to depend on the strength of your bit. You know, it's just going to depend on your business model and how aggressive you are as the business owner and going about building that process, you know, starting that process. Plus, you know, you can get access to cash credit, which is what everyone wants. So that's going to be in the form of credit cards. And we have here four months or fewer, but typically I tell my clients eight to 10 months. Okay. And I probably should change that to eight, eight to 10 months as opposed to four months, because the reality is most business owners just don't move as fast and as aggressively as they should. But we have seen it done in four months. So let's talk about the benefits, right? How does this benefit my business? Well, obviously you can use business credit to fund your business. You can use business credit to for marketing and advertising. You can use business credit to pay employees. You can use business credit for resources uh, and different things that you would need for your office location or, or for your business. For example, you can use business credit to purchase things like ink, paper, computers, phone services, uh, websites, etc. I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, if you're in the real estate business, you can use business credit. Uh, to invest in properties. If you're a trucking company, you can use business, you can establish business credit to buy fuel and maintenance cars. If you're a credit repair company, you know, you can use business credit uh, to pay for a multitude of things that you would need to run your office. It doesn't matter if you're an event planner, you can use business credit to buy the things that you would need in order to plan for your event. I mean, there are so many uses that you can use business credit for. And the thing about it is, when you have business credit, it makes it easier for you to get business loans because any type of true business loan that you get, particularly from a conventional bank, they're going to want to see your business credit. So your business credit is going to be a big factor into whether or not you can actually get a business loan. And the thing about business credit is you can get high limits and you can get high limits quickly. You know, whereas on the personal side, you know, when you get your first credit card, on the on the personal credit side it may be a 300 or 500 or maybe even like a thousand dollar limit well in the business world typically when you get your first business credit card you're usually looking at somewhere anywhere from five thousand to ten thousand dollars i remember when i got my first business credit card uh it was fifteen thousand dollars i couldn't believe it well if you think about it it makes perfect perfect sense a business has much more of an appetite for credit than a consumer would ever need. And so that's why naturally the banks offer how higher limits for business for business credit cards. Now it's important to note that when you start talking about business credit and building your business credit reports, it's important to note that anyone can pull your business credit reports, which is very different than on the personal side, because on the personal side you need something that's called permissible purpose. You need permissible purpose in order to uh, pull someone's personal credit. In other words, they need your permission in order to pull your personal credit. Whereas in the business credit world, no permission is needed at all. Some of the additional benefits, excuse me, excuse me, of business credit is you don't need a personal guarantee or a credit check. Now, it would be disingenuous for me to say that this is the case 100% of the time because again, it's going to depend on the nature of your business. Uh, what things you've established for your business, you know, how long you've been in business. Like there are a lot of factors that come into play. Even how you fill out the credit application may determine whether or not you need a personal guarantee or a credit check. But in most cases, when done right by a business that's set up properly, you do not need a personal guarantee or credit check um, in order to build your business credit. Business credit doesn't put an inquiry on your personal credit. You know, every time you pull your personal credit, that's an inquiry and it costs you points. Well, that's not the case with business credit. They don't penalize you for pulling your credit because they know businesses have an appetite for credit and that business owners are always looking for money for their business. 
Now, building good business credit can help you get loans later on, as I mentioned before, because again, anytime a, a bank looks to give you some type of business loan or, or business line of credit, they want to know that you have some type of established business credit, right? But first, there are some things that you need to do. What you need to do before you even think about doing, um, you know, building business credit or getting a business loan or anything like that is you need to legitimize your business. And what do I mean by legitimize your business? Well, you want your business to look legit in the eyes of the lender. You want to legitimize your, your business. You want to have what I call lender credibility with your business. And this is by far the most important step. And I can't stress enough how often I see business owners skip over this part or don't pay attention to the small details when it comes to this part of setting up the business because you have to look at it from a lender's perspective. They don't know who you are. They don't know much about your business. You may have the best business in the world, but the lender doesn't know who you are. For all they know, this could be a hobby for you. This could be something that you're doing for fun. And they're not looking to invest money in a business or a hobby for something that someone is doing for fun. So they don't know how serious you are about your business. So the way you set your business up tells the lender a lot about how serious you are about your business. They don't know if you will walk out at the first sign of trouble, meaning they don't know if they're going to get their money back. And obviously the lender and the banks are trying to protect against losing money. So you need to legitimize your business. Okay. So. The thing about it is when you're in the startup phase, they're going to want to see again that you have legitimate business. Now, a startup has little to no history and that makes the numbers nervous. In other words, that makes you a high risk. If you're a new business, you're a high risk, especially uh, if you're a new business with no history. And what I define a new business is a business that is really three years, that's been in business three years of less. And the reason I use that is as my definition is because we know that a large portion of businesses fail before they even hit that three year mark. Now you'll see some studies that say the five year mark, but nonetheless, um, if you're in the six month, one year, one and a half year, two year, you're definitely considered uh, a new business. And so that makes lenders nervous because you're a much higher risk for default. So you want to seem legitimate. And so what I'm about to do is I'm about to outline some of the ways that you can make your business look legitimate, that you can legitimize your business in the eyes of the lenders. This is not Brian's eyes. This is the lender's eyes. What do the lenders want? You know, the lenders want businesses with a phone number. They want businesses with an 800 number because that to them, that says this is a legitimate company. Now, you can do this for a, you don't have to go out and get a landline um 1-800 number. I mean, you can use a virtual number. And in our business credit building system, we have some resources that you can get a virtual phone number, 1-800 number, fairly, fairly cheap. And you can have this number ring to your landline at home or to your cell phone. Uh, either or, either or, it doesn't matter. Uh, in the eyes of a lender, legitimate businesses have fax numbers. Um, I realize that fax machines are becoming a thing of the past, but nonetheless, uh, they have fax numbers. Maybe the fax goes to most faxes now are, are fax to email. You know, they go to your email. But nonetheless, in the eyes of, of the lender, a legitimate business corporation entity, they have a fax number. Uh, plus, there are a lot of credit applications that you will need to fax in or needs to be faxed to you. So you want to have that fax number. And there's some really cheap resources out there that we can recommend you for fax numbers as well as well what you don't want to do is give your personal cell phone or your residential phone number and put that on a on a credit application uh, that's going to get you flagged as an unestablished entity and it's also going to open you up to a ridiculous amount of telemarketers because uh lenders out there that are trying to you know uh issue capital will go out there and find your number listed with your business and they'll use that for the automated telemarketing schemes and well not even telemarketing scheme you know they'll just use your they're just you get a lot of phone calls um or people trying to sell you things and different things like that so you definitely want to make sure you leave your personal and your residential number off of your business applications you know 
for legitimate business is listed in the 411. Like we should be able to find information about you, about you and your business by going to the 411 directly. Now this can be accomplished a couple of different ways. You can, you know, go directly to 411.com and get your small business listed. And you know, when you do, you have to make sure that that business is 100% accurate. Uh, if you don't have a listing, you know, you can do things like listyourself.net, I believe, or is it listyourself.com? Uh, it's one of the two. It's either listyourself.net or listyourself.com. Uh, Yex. Uh, also, the DNB Credit Builder that I don't recommend, but with the DNB Credit Builder is another way that you can get um, your number listed in the 411 by buying the, you know, the DNB Credit Builder. Uh, it's not necessary, but it is a way that you can get your business. And it, and and in some instances, it may make sense for your business. You know, that just has to be evaluated on a case by case basis, right? Now, obviously, in 2019 and beyond, moving into 2020, you have to have a professional website. I mean, I just got to be honest with you. If you don't have a professional website, then you really, you really, you're really not in business. You, I mean, I just can't stress that enough. You have to have a professional website to be considered a legitimate, you know, and, and the thing about it is the lender will find a lot of information about you and your business by going to your website. So you want to make sure that you, you know, have an impressive professional looking website and that it has all the pertinent information that they would need in order to make a credit decision for you. So it's better that they get the web, the information about your business from your website than to get that from somewhere else. And a professional basic website is going to have a lot of the, the business information that the lender is going to need. Now, you can go to Template Monster. Uh, there's a company called Upwork where you can go and find web developers. You can go uh, search in the business groups on Facebook. There are a lot of people that, people that do web design. There's a company out there called Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com, that you can get someone to build you a, a nice, uh, you know, website. And, you know, it don't have to spend a lot of money to be uh, to be a really nice website. But nonetheless, you want to get you a basic professional looking website and you can start with the basics and then you can get your hosting for somewhere like GoDaddy or HostGator but you definitely want to get a professional website if you if you don't have a website then you're not in business and in 2019 and you know the lenders are just not going to take you seriously they're just not and so you want to have a legitimate business email address as you remember at the beginning of this presentation, um, I gave you my email address, Brian Howard at bkscreditgroup.com. I didn't use a Yahoo. I don't have a Yahoo account. It wasn't a Hotmail or Gmail. It was a professional business address in the domain name of my business. So you don't want to use um, the Yahoo and Gmail or anything like that. And you want to use a, a, a professional like your name at your company or, you know, customer service at your company or you know ceo at your company like whatever you know you want to use as the prefix but it needs to be at your company the name domain name to give you that professional looking presence that the lender is going to require in order to give you money for your business now we probably could have put this at the beginning of the presentation but i think this goes without saying you know you, your business has to have a proper entity so you got to have a tax id number that you get from the irs i think that goes without saying and you need to decide on a business entity now a sole proprietor is okay to start but you probably want to be with an llc or partnership because you're just really not going to be able to build business credit with a sole proprietor proprietorship you're going to have to look at an llc a s corp and a c corp now i could do a whole one hour two hour presentation on the difference between the, the three of those entities i'll just say this the llc is the simplest entity to form it requires the least amount of paperwork and it's probably the easiest entity to understand and it works 100 percent perfect for building business credit um so that's all i say about that and so having that ein number means that you can start the process of building business credit right away and start transitioning away from using your personal credit because that's what this is about this is about getting away from your personal credit and transitioning to using your business credit so you want to get your duns number um, obviously you know you want to get your duns number because a duns number is the identifier that dun and bradstreet uses uh to identify your business now the duns number is 
a worldwide number. Uh, it's not just used here in the U.S. It's used worldwide. And, you know, the Dunn's number is only unique for Dun and Bradstreet. Uh, it's only going to show up on your Dun and Bradstreet report. But obviously, a lot of lenders rely on Dun and Bradstreet for information about your business, not just your business credit score, but and what trade lines you have. But Dun and Bradstreet uh, tracks a lot of other uh aspects of your business as well and they provide that type of data uh to the lenders and so you need to they need to be able to tell the difference between joe's diner in seattle as opposed to joe's diner in tallahassee florida uh, because they're both joe's diners but they're in different locations and they might not be owned by the same joe right so that's why things like the don's number uh help identify and separate those businesses so we know that they're not one in the same and and you and you can and you can't start building business credit without it. And the Dunn's number is free, right? You don't want to pay for the Dunn's number. Now, you, if you ever call up Dunn and Bradstreet, they're gonna be very aggressive about trying to sell you a package that includes the Dunn's number and tell you that you need this package in order to legitimize your business. And that's just not true. You don't need the Dunn's number. Just go in do a free request for a Dunn's number. They'll tell you that it takes 30 days. I don't think I've ever known anyone where it took the full 30. Uh, most of the time you get it within a week and it's absolutely 100% free. So please, please, please do not pay for a Dunn's number. Now I wanna briefly talk about um, your personal credit because again, while we're talking about separating your personal credit uh, from your business credit, I don't want you to think that you can just totally ignore your personal credit. You always want to have good personal credit. And so at some point you may have to use, um, you know, your personal credit in order to get that jump start that you need. So continue to pay your bills on time and, you know, keep bankruptcies and negative off of your credit report. Uh, a good personal credit score will open up even more business credit opportunities because what happens a lot of times is a business owner goes in and they want a line of credit and they want to use the strength of their business and that's 100 percent perfectly okay and lenders are okay with that in a lot of cases but even if they're not going to make you personally guarantee the line of credit they still want to take a look at your business your, your personal credit rather to see how you manage that because in their mind you're going to manage their the, their business credit the same way you manage your personal credit so even if you're not doing a pg or a personal guarantee you still want to have that good personal credit because a lot of lenders will ask to see um your personal credit and that can have an effect on not so much whether or not you get the line of credit but what type of interest and fees you're actually going to pay once you're actually approved for that line of credit. And remember, you know, we can we definitely can help you with your personal credit. That is a service that we can provide for you as well. Just wanted to mention that as a side note. Now, we want to talk about um, some of the unsecured business financing. Again, that's available for startup businesses. You know, I think that, you know, using your personal credit for a startup business can can sometimes be a great idea you know it, it can make sense in some instances so we don't want to go away from it because if you get the unsecured business financing you don't you, you don't you don't have any collateral the business has no collateral so you the bit the banks assume you're a high risk right you don't have a lot of revenue so the banks assume you're a high risk so because you're not going to be able to supply supply collateral because you don't have high revenue or high cash for high cash flow i should say they may have to look at your personal credit. Now, with a 650, you could probably get some personal credit cards. Obviously, you don't really want to fund your business with personal credit cards. But if you got a 680 to 700, you can get business and personal credit cards, and you may and you may want to use that and leverage building your business credit through those credit cards. And those are some different strategies that you can use with that um, that we can teach you on how to you know leverage your your personal credit to really accelerate you know building your business credit but we talk about that in another on another webinar on a private consultation but the moral of the story is like i don't want you to ignore your personal credit you want to keep uh good personal credit and see when we're doing an unsecured business financing which is really you know business credit cards so you know we're able to get you five to eight credit cards and we, we get you five to eight credit cards with good limits and this is all based off your personal credit and then you can use that to grow your business now 
most of the time when we talking about getting you financing unsecured business financing we can get you five times as much as if you would just apply it on your own and try to get personal financing so to give you a real life example I had a client come to me and he wanted uh, he was interested in the, in the unsecured business financing which was our business credit card program and you know obviously we have a a, a, a success fee for that program and he didn't want to do the success fee even though we had pre-approved him right or pre-qualified him rather I should say for 80,000 so based on our experience we saw okay you know what based on his file we should be able to get him about 80,000 well he didn't want to pay the fee and so he decided that he was going to do it on his own well nonetheless he comes back you know about two months later uh, with 25 inquiries on his on his credit card on his credit report and he was able to get 16 16 5 so because he tried to do it on his own he was only able to get 16,500 where we had already pre-qualified him for a minimum of 80,000 so that's the difference between when you let us uh, help you get the unsecured financing as opposed to when you do it on your own and we're talking about unsecured financing that's based on um, the strength of your personal credit which is uh, simply which is is different uh, from building business credit and so again you know if you supply the personal guarantee we can get you the unsecured business financing they're gonna check your personal credit you can get anywhere from 25 to 150 and three weeks later and three weeks or fewer uh, I don't think I've had anyone that we've pre-qualified that didn't get pre-qualified for at least 40,000 so 25 is actually on the low end but 25 sounds like a much nicer number so we have that range 25 to 150 it's gonna vary based on you know each individual situation but nonetheless the unsecured business finance you get some zero percent rates for six to 18 months which is huge because it's basically like an interest-free loan or line of credit to grow your business and so you want to manage that responsibly and then we can show you how to build an excellent business credit score in six days using uh, that method now once you jump from that obviously you know we're going back talking about building a business credit you want to build your trade credit uh, and you can get these and you know usually within 30 days It's for different goods and services uh, like coffee and toner supplies you need trade lines that report to the business credit reporting agency uh, we have one of the largest trade line databases we have probably we, we have the largest trade line database I, I feel confident in saying that we have the largest uh, trade line database particularly for startup businesses in our program so uh, if you're looking to build business credit and you're a startup business and you need access to trade lines that you can start uh, using right away to build your business then you know we have a large database of trade lines and these trade lines you know report to the business credit bureaus here's just some of the ones that you know that you can use that you can make note of obviously to you know to build business credit some of these most of these you probably already heard of maybe maybe not just depending on how much definitely if you've been on my channel or you're on my email list you know about Uline you know about Quill Office Supply if you have a Wells Fargo in your area you know they're all over the place and you can get an account with Wells Fargo then they offer a very good uh, secure business credit card they're only one of like three secure business credit cards out there and I think this one by far is the best one It's issued by one of the largest banks in the country and so those right there there are three trade lines right there that you can start right away and when you get these trade lines uh, keep in mind hey you may get denied first time for different reasons you know we just correct whatever wrong and then we go back you get approved and then you know you use the trade line to buy some materials or buy a service and then you want to pay it on time and you want to pay it on time every time it's really that simple whatever the issue your credit you use the credit you pay it on time right you know and I made a note down here that consider donating unused items to charity and what I mean by that is sometimes you may have to buy from a vendor that you don't necessarily want to buy from but but because they report to the business credit bureaus you buy from so hey you know what whatever you buy from them you can if you don't really want to use it for yourself then you can take that and donate it to charity and write it off on your taxes and then you're not lost any money so that's uh, a, a business strategy that you know you can use so it's never it's never a loss remember this is a process this is a, a marathon not a sprint and so once you got a minimum of five 
trade lines and I say a minimum doesn't mean exactly five you know I would tell everyone don't do the minimum once you've got seven or eight trade lines maybe even ten then you want maybe want to look at moving on to some of the revolving store credit like the Amazons and the Staples and the Best Buys of the world but we recommend you have at least a minimum of five starter vendors uh, but I've never been one to do the minimum so I would say seven or eight but we have seen uh, businesses be able to move to the next level uh, of business credit accounts by only having five starter vendor accounts um, and it's very important to keep in mind that some of these companies have a, a time and business requirement and I won't be able to, I'm not going to go through all those um, in this webinar because I mean obviously there are just so many but really what that means is is it doesn't matter what your business credit score is if they want you to have been in business a year before they give you a no PG you have to be in business a year or if they want you to have been in business for 24 months or two years you have to have been in business for 24 months or two years that's gonna vary from business to business but that's something that you understand but again we're in it for the long haul we have the CFO mentality so that's perfectly fine you know we're working on continuing to grow the finances of the business all right this is another reason not to go for the credit before you secure at least uh, five star you know five starter vendors because you want to have those accounts and you want to have that time in business right you want to have the accounts and you want to have that time in business so get your business started as soon as possible so you can get that time in business and basically your time in business starts from the date you open your business bank account so just going and registering your your business with the Secretary of State in the eyes of the lender that's not the start date for your business the start date is when you get that business bank account so make that a priority to get that business bank account we're gonna build the starter vendors we're gonna get your revolving store credit and then we're gonna get to the good stuff that a lot of people like and that's your revolving store credit accounts with the Visa and the MasterCard logos uh, some of them are things like gas and and maintenance that have a co-branded with Visa and MasterCard and then also uh, business business credit cards because I know everybody wants cash credit and when you get this cash credit you have to be responsible you have to be responsible so if you have a ten thousand dollar limit with a store uh, you can get that same limit in cash meaning you can move you know you can take that credit limit and, and move it over and use it as cash these these type of applications we do everything we can to keep our socials off of these type of applications and make sure the lender you know is using you know your business credit reports to qualify you for these accounts so what that means is is only use your EIN number to apply for these accounts and I can't stress again about managing your business credit responsibly you know one of the big things here that you know I, I feel strongly about at BK's credit group is you know I'm really about integrity uh, responsibility and just doing the things doing things the right way you know I love working with business owners but I only want to work with serious legit business owners that are trying to grow a business you know there's no get rich scheme going on over here there's you know I'm not looking for to work with anyone that think that they can just get a bunch of vendors on a report and then get some credit cards and run the credit cards up and not pay them back that's not what we're about over here excuse me we're about trying to grow legitimate businesses we are about the CFO mentality right from 2019 and beyond going into 2020 the CFO mentality growing your business financially and exponentially through the use of business credit and so you your business credit is mainly your scores are mainly based on your payment history so pay your bit your bills on time late and incomplete payments will directly uh, affect your business credit scores don't borrow and don't use more than you can afford to pay back I think that goes without saying and build it and build a history of responsible payments because building a responsible history just like on the personal side will take you a long way as you continue to establish your business credit right now I'm up to about 260 270 thousand in business credit um, you know you know some of that a lot of that's credit cards I probably have over a hundred thousand in business credit cards probably I don't know another 50 60 thousand in vendor credit uh, another 67 thousand I don't know in retail store credit but 
I know I have over 250. I think I'm somewhere between 260 and 270. But this was done by discipline, uh, consistence, continuing to educate myself and growing uh, the business. And this can be done for any business because I did it for myself and I did it right from, you know, th the comfort of my home, you know. So, you know, with that being said, you know, if you're a startup, you need to show you show that you're a legitimate business so lenders will feel better about loaning to you. Building business credit is a specific process. We have that process outlined in our program. Your startup is your dream. You know, it can start anywhere. We can help you with this. We have a program that outlines this step by step. So, you know, if you're serious about build, building business credit, then, you know, we encourage you to reach out to us. And again, where can you find us? You can find us on the web at www.bkhcreditgroup.com, right? You, you can call us at 1-800-979-4828. Now, phone is not our preferred method of communication because we only work on appointments only. We have a high call volume, so we really like you for to go to the website, book, of, book an appointment, or send me an email, okay? But with that being said, I, I tried to knock this out at about 35 minutes. We're at about 35, so not too bad. I hope you enjoyed the information. Again, it's Brian Howard, www.bkhcreditgroup.com. Shoot me an email at Brian Howard at bkhcreditgroup.com and let us help you build business credit for your new startup business. Thank you.